Hey everyone, I'm Chris, and welcome to another video in the Modular Firearm series for Neo FPS. In this video, we're going to be creating a new firearm prefab using the Modular Firearm Components Quick Setup feature and the Modules section in its inspector. To demonstrate this process, we're going to be using the same asset as we did in the old firearm series, the Low Poly FPS Pack Free Sample by David Stenfers. The Low Poly FPS Pack is a great asset for anybody wanting a weapons pack that fits nicely alongside low poly environment and character art packs like Sinti or Just Create. Its big strength is that it has some really high quality animations, which are actually quite hard to find in any style to be honest. The free sample comes with an AK-47 assault rifle and a Glock pistol, and we're going to be using the AK for this demo. So I've imported the low poly FPS pack asset into my project and I've moved it into a third party folder along with all the others that we're going to use for this tutorial series. So inside here we have low poly FPS pack, prefabs, example prefabs, arms, and then these are the actual weapon setups for their asset. So if we have a look here, we've got the actual character controller, the arm, the weapons, so it's got the rigid body, capsule collider, all of that. So to prep this for use in new FPS, we need to clear off various elements of that just so that we've got the weapon and the animations and all those kind of things. So I am going to duplicate this prefab and then I'm going to move it down here into a low poly FPS folder that I've set up for the tutorial. And let's call it uh, AK47 View Model. Right. Now, if I open up this prefab, Let's have a quick rummage through the hierarchy and see what we can do to clean it up. So first up, right down at the bottom, we've got the player canvas. This is the low poly FPS um, hood. Um, it's the crosshair, inventory, things like that. Don't need it, that can go. Uh, at the very root, we have the character controller. So let's remove all of these components. The audio source can go, capsule collider, rigid body, all of those need to go. And then as we move down, the hierarchy to the arms assault rifle itself, we've got uh, the firearm script. So that can go, audio sources there can go as well. Okay, next up, cameras. So if you remember previously, I was saying that sometimes you're going to get firearm assets where the camera is not the origin. This is the case with this one. So if I click here, then you can see that this is the origin of the entire character. It's somewhere inside the buttstock of the rifle, so obviously not the best place, where he has a separate camera object here. Now NeoFS has its own camera, so we don't want the component, but we do want to keep the game object. So let's leave this here. And then further down as well, there's another camera object. So we're going to do the same. We're going to remove the camera component from that, and we're going to leave the object itself. So last thing, if we look inside the hierarchy of the uh, of the weapon, you will find an object called weapon, which is the bone for the actual gun itself. And inside there is an object called components, which uh, who knows why the origin of that is way up there. Doesn't really matter, as long as Z is pointing forwards, keep it nice and simple. So inside here, we have things like the casing spawn point, the muzzle flash uh, elements, so different particle systems and the bullet spawn point. So again, who knows why that's where that is. So let's move this so it's actually in line with the gun. Nice, that looks pretty good. And the particle system, we're gonna use a particle muzzle effect uh, module for Neo FPS, um, but that does have one requirement, which is that it's a single particle system. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to make a few changes to the low poly particle system just to get it set up nice. Um, first up in emission, we're going to get rid of rate over time uh, and just use this burst section here. So what that means is that in code, when you call emit on the particle system, it will use this burst instead of continuously firing particles over time. Up here, we're also going to say this is not looping. This is a one-time thing, so you have to call emit for every particle. And play on awake is already disabled, so that's good. Right, next up, we're going to have a look at sub-emitters. So saying that we can only have one particle system, what that really means is that we can move the spark particles and the light as children of this. 
I'll select it again and open up the sub-emitters. Then we can essentially trigger each of these at the same time when it spawns a particle from here. So spark particles will set up like that. If I open up the spark particle system, we want to do some similar things. We want to get rid of looping. We want to go to the emission and set rate over time to zero. So back at the original, the last thing to do here is add the light. So we have a light section here. We can drag the muzzle flash light in there and set the ratio to one, meaning that for every particle that this muzzle flash particle system creates, that light is flared once. And there we go. That should work just fine with it. Uh, let's also check the position of the casing spawn point. That looks good. The main difference is that Neo FPS uses the Y axis for the direction that it fires. So if we select that again, there we go. So Z is forwards and Y is out from the weapon. And essentially that's everything that we need for the view model. Okay, so the other thing that I've done just to prep for this is I've duplicated the low poly FPS animation controller for this weapon. Uh, and then I've trimmed it down to just something a little bit, a little bit more manageable. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail on this because there is a separate video uh, on setting up animated controllers for NeoFPS firearms. The main difference is that NeoFPS uses animated parameters to control the animation, whereas low poly FPS uh, was triggering states directly from within scripts. This means that I then need to tie the actual animation states to these parameters and you do that using these connections here. Um, any state is a special state that basically means that at any time you can transition out of here if the conditions here are met. So for example, from any state at all, shoot uh, the shoot trigger. When the aim bool is false, will take you to this. The shoot trigger when the aim bool is true will take you to the aim fire state. And so on and so forth. And then when those complete, they move on to the various idols, um, things like that. Like I said, there's another video that will go through this in a little bit more detail. But you can also hit me up on the Discord if you want a bit of extra guidance on how to set your, uh, your animators up. So, with that, and with the view model, let's actually get started making a firearm. Okay, so let's back out of the prefab and actually get a weapon set up. So there's two ways to do this. You can create a prefab directly in your scene using the modular firearm component and set it up from there. And there is also a modular firearm wizard in the new FPS hub that guides you through the process. Uh, we're actually gonna cover that in the next video. So this time around, let's have a look at the firearm component itself. So the first thing that I'm gonna do so I'm going to create an object in the scene. It's just a simple demo scene that we've got here. And I'm going to call it low poly AK47. And then to that, I'm going to add the modular firearm component. Now, the first thing that you'll see is that this is quite different from the previous time that we we're looking at it. And this is in what's called the quick setup state. So if the firearm's got no view model geometry, then it defaults into this state. It doesn't give you all the options for different modules and things like that. Instead, it provides you with uh, properties to get you set up and start off with. So use inventory, yes, we wanna do that. We wanna use the standard one, standard input, save system, yes, weapon geometry. So here we drag in the view model that we just prepped. Now if we hit set up firearm, then we have the prefab all set up. We can expand it. We've got the spring system and we've got the actual um, view model. So let's turn this into a prefab by dragging it out of the scene and then let's delete this one. One of the things that trips a lot of people up from the previous tutorial series is that in creating the prefab in the scene they were then making modifications to this and not applying it to the prefab so when they added that prefab to their characters things weren't reflected. It's, it's a problem with the prefab system. It's just, you gotta remember to apply all changes, but the safest thing to do by far is as soon as you've created it, uh, a prefab from your object, delete it and just work with the prefab itself. Don't work with it in a scene. The new prefab system a la 2018.3 onwards allows you to do that and actually open up your prefabs. The old tutorial series was created with Unity 2017, so you couldn't actually do that at the time. So. Let's open up the prefab. So yeah, here we've got the view model. 
uh, the actual weapon itself and I'm just going to collapse the arms to get those out of the way because yeah we're not worried about that. So if we look at the root of it then you can see an error on the fire anim trigger parameter with matching name not found, uh, an error on the raise anim trigger and then various arrows, errors saying uh, the firearm requires these modules to work. So let's address those in order. So we have here the view model. Oh no, it's this one here. This has the animator on it. So we are. We want to use this animator controller that we've set up. And if we go back to the root here, still an error, but that's because in this case, it's called shoot. Um, I just used the trigger that was already set up there for that. Um, let's actually see what the it's called. It's called raise for the actual draw animation. Always fun. Here we go. Raise. If I can sausage fingers. There you go. Dry fire sound. We should just be able to stick on shared dry fire. Weapon raise sound. Let's have a look. Assault rifle uh, draw. Sounds good to me. Turn the volume config to one. Match transform. As I was saying previously, we need to align the weapon so that the camera here is at the origin. So if we just zoom in a bit, you can see this is the weapon, this is the view model, and this is the camera. So we go back here and we drag this camera into this here, and the whole thing has aligned. So, with the basics all sorted, let's go and have a look at the actual uh, modules to attach to it. So, for the shooter, uh, which if you remember is uh, what the actual uh, firearm emits, we will add a ballistic shooter. So this errors, because it's, uh, it's got some things missing from it. So, projectile prefab. So across Neo FPS, um, in the wizards and on the module components and various other components throughout the asset, you'll find these object fields, which actually, uh, they're not the standard Unity ones. If you click the picker on this, it won't just open the standard browser. Instead, it gives you, this one gives me much more control over what to search for. So this, for example here, these are all of the valid projectiles that you can attach to this, uh, to this firearm. So let's do 556mm. The muzzle tip, same thing, this is a different browser than the standard Unity one. This will actually open the hierarchy browser. So this is the hierarchy of the model on the weapon. So for example in here we have, where are you muzzle tip? Components, bullet spawn point, that's the one. So all of those errors are gone and now if we go back up you'll see ballistic shooter is all good. Okay, so next up, for the trigger module, we want automatic trigger, because it's a machine gun. So the default values there will be absolutely fine. This doesn't have a trigger hold animation or anything like that, so we can just leave that blank and no errors. Next up, aimer module. So in this case, we want to use the weapon move aimer. Uh, again, default settings are mostly fine. However, in this asset, he actually uses aim animations. So instead of aligning the weapon to the camera procedurally using new FPS, there is actually an animation ball that we can set. Uh, aim anim ball here. So if we just call that aim, that will be found. Um, and that means that every time that you right click to ADS, it will set that ball to true. And when you right click again, it will set it to false or you know, when you hold it down and when you release, uh, depending on the toggle hold settings. Now, one important thing when using animations is that firing, because of that, um, any state setup will interrupt the animation. So, for example, as you're halfway through raising the weapon, if you shoot, it will play the the aim recoil animation from the uh, from the aiming state. So you get a bit of a weird jump, which can look a bit dodgy, but it can also mean that the gun's firing a bullet when it's pointing in a direction that you don't necessarily want it to. So what you can do here is you can set block trigger to true, and what this means is that the trigger will not be able to fire for the duration of that transition animation between aiming and standard idle. So yeah, let's go through the other settings here. The aim up audio, we can just use a assault rifle aim up, aim down, we can use assault rifle uh, aim down. 
nice and easy. We have accuracy caps for the different aiming or hip fire. We have crosshairs down at the bottom for the different aiming and hip fire. Transitions, loads of different options. We'll go through all of these in a separate video on the aimer modules. Um, the other one that's really important here is the aim offset. If it wasn't for that aim animation, raising the weapon to align it with the camera, you would want to use this aim offset here, which is where you can either set a position rotation or you can use a proxy object that will be aligned to the camera by dragging it into this. There we go, that's the aimer. Next up, let's have a look at the reloader module. Now, low poly FPS uses a chambered reloader, which means that there are separate animations when you've uh, fired every round in the weapon versus when you still have some rounds left. So here we have the two animation parameters. We have the reload anim trigger and the empty anim ball. Now those match up with the animations already if those. Obviously if that didn't match then we would have had errors there and it would have been reflected above. But that is all good. Let's just see what audio we've got. So we could do reload audio when empty. So this is not empty, we want ammo left. And here we go, reload again. So out of ammo. And there we go, so that's the different audio to match up. The ammo um, component, the ammo module. So in this case, let's go for shared pool ammo. So this pulls ammo from the inventory. And then we will choose the ammo type here. We're going to say 556, uh, which is what the standard Neo FPS demo assault rifle uses. Now, the other thing here, which is causing an error at the moment, is the ammo effect. Um, we, don't, we haven't added one of those yet. That's the next thing we're going to do. So, yeah, a little error there saying uh, one of the modules has an error, requires an ammo effect. So, boom, we go through this and we just say bullet. Jobs are good. So this is damage, bullet size, impact force, pretty simple. And right now we can just click that drop down on the shared pool ammo, select that, and that clears that error. What else do we have? Recoil handler. So let's add on the better spring recoil handler. We open this up. This gives us different recoil settings for hip fire versus aim down sights and different accuracy uh, kicks here. So there's a few presets. Let's go for a full auto heavy. That's the recoil. Muzzle effect. We've got a particle system in the hierarchy. So go for a simple particle muzzle effect. Currently has an error on it. So if we click on the picker here, this is again the hierarchy browser. And there we go. Just select that. And this module is also the audio if um, feedback as well as the visuals, so we want to add in some gunshots here. Let's go for, what does he call it, just shoot, that's the one. I think he shares the same audio across all of the different weapons in the free sample, I'm not sure if he does in the full asset. But yeah, shot volume one, all good. And last but not least, we'll go for the shell ejector. So let's just use a standard shell eject. Got an error on it at the moment, so we need to assign to that the proxy, which is that object that tells us where to eject from. So we reposition that earlier, if you remember. Casing spawn point, that's the one. And a shell prefab to spawn. So again, project browser, let's go for chunky 760. And that, essentially, is everything you need for a firearm. So, with that, let's exit out of the prefab here. Okay, so I've exited out of the new firearm prefab, and here we are looking at a demo scene. So let's try and get it set up so that we can uh, give it a little demo. So this scene here, I've built specifically for the tutorials. Um, you won't find this in Neo FPS, however, you could just as easily use, say, the firearm uh, demo scenes. So first up, let's grab the scene itself. There it is. We've got a little character here. And we've got a spawner, so simple as that. Now the character has an inventory on it here. Uh, and on that inventory is a list of starting items. This is the items that you start with when you spawn into the game. Uh, the other way to do this is to add 
uh, new FPS, inventory, loadout. So this is a simple asset uh, that we can just expand here, add uh, our weapon to, low poly AK-47, drops a gun, and then in the scene itself, in the spawner, or the prefab for the spawner here, you can just drop that loadout straight on there. And what this will do is it will override the inventory of the character on spawn and give it all the items in that inventory loadout. Uh, just to make it simpler to share characters across multiple scenes and setups and things like that. So, that's the loadout set up. Let's just check back on the firearm itself and see what we need to do for the inventory. So here we have the S FPS inventory wieldable. Now one of the really important things is that you match the inventory type between the character and the weapon itself. So there are two types on the weapon, FPS inventory wieldable and FPS inventory wieldable swappable. So on the character, we have the FPS inventory quick switch. This is just the standard wieldable. You can also have the FPS inventory stacked. Again, just uses the standard wieldable, uh, and you can have the FPS inventory swappable. That one needs to use the wieldable swappable on the weapon. I'll go through these separately in an inventory uh, video, but yeah, this one currently standard and standard. So, back to this. Uh, the important things on the FPS inventory wieldable are the ID and the quick slot. So quick slot is the number that it appears on your keyboard when you're selecting your different weapons. However, it is array based, so it starts at zero instead of at one. So uh, whichever number you want it to be, minus one. So let's say four. Uh, display image, let's just pick, I think there is one for this. Yep, assault rifle one icon. And the inventory ID, this needs to be unique for each different item that the character can pick up. So in this situation, if we open up the browser here, this is the database browser, you would pick uh, an ID from here and you have to make sure it doesn't clash. So if the character already has an item in, in their inventory with the ID that you're using here, you will not be able to pick the item up. Um, in this situation, I am just going to use the firearm assault rifle inventory ID, but like I say, Bear in mind that if you're already holding an assault rifle, you won't be able to pick up this new one. There we go. That should be all that's required. So if I hit play. So here's the assault rifle that we just set up. First thing you'll notice is it only has one bullet. So uh, we can change those settings next. Let's fire that shot. So let's go through and sort some of these issues one by one. So let's look at improving what we've got. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up the prefab again, and let's scroll down to that chambered reloader that we added. If you remember, this is the magazine. So where are you hiding? There you are. So magazine size, let's bump that up to 30. Starting magazine at 30. Let's see that. Okay, so here we go. Nice, that's much better. And we can grab some ammo into the inventory, do a reload. So you see that involves pulling the charging handle at the end there, or we can do a quick reload, which doesn't require that because there was already uh, a round chambered. Yeah, what else can we do to improve this? Okay, so another thing about the low poly FPS assets is that they actually use camera animation. Um, now, because Neo FPS has the camera separate to the weapon hierarchy, uh, we need to add a component which ties the two together. And the way that you do that is um, on the root of the weapon, we need to add what's called a firearm transform match setter. And the way this works is it takes the difference between two transforms uh, and applies that to the uh, player character camera. So here, for example, we have the target which we want to set to this main camera. And we need a relative too, so we need to set up an anchor that essentially is going to stay stationary compared to that. So if we duplicate this object, so it's in the same position, 
And we want to move this out of the animated part of the hierarchy to the weapon spring. So a child of the weapon spring there. And the reason it wants to be a child of this and not a child of the root is that the weapon spring is what adds on all of the procedural animation to the firearm. So in this situation, what that means is that if you, for example, had a recoil that moved the gun, the difference between the camera and that would include that recoil animation. So that would also be moved into the character camera. We don't want that. All that we want is the animation of the camera deliberately keyframed by the low-poly FPS asset. So we have this. We've moved it to a child of the weapon spring. Should be in the exact same position of the other one. So I'm just going to call this anchor. And then back on the tran fire on transform match setter. I'm going to drag this into the relative two. So there we go. We have a weight slider, which is how much of that diff is transferred to the character camera. So you can fade it in and out. And then we have which match setter to actually apply that to. So we have head, upper body, and then the aim transform. So we want to use head. Jobs again. Let's uh, fire it up and see what happens. There you go, you saw the head bob side to side as we reloaded there. Have some more rounds. And do another reload. There we go. And that makes quite a big difference. So yeah, essentially we've got a decent working firearm set up very, very quickly just by adding the relevant modules, fixing any errors on them, and then just tweaking a few settings. But there's loads that you can do to add to that just by tweaking the modules themselves. Okay. So hopefully that gives you a good grounding in using the wizard and makes it a bit more approachable when starting out. In upcoming videos, we're going to be taking a look at the inventory system and creating pickups and drops, uh, working with animations, as well as the procedural animation options available to you in Neo, and running through each of the modules and components available to you when working with Neo's firearms. As always, hop on the Discord if you have any more questions or suggestions. Uh, thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.